Okay, so in chemistry, accuracy, precision, and something called significant figures are actually very important to what we do. And we make a lot of measurements. When we make those measurements, it's important to know what the resolution is or how certain we are. So resolution here doesn't mean the same thing as a New Year's resolution. It means it's talking about how well the machines measure whatever it is you're measuring. So resolution is really important when it comes to science. It is the smallest interval measurable by whatever the scientific instrument is. For example, if I was to measure um, mass using my balance at home compared to the balances I have here at school. They have different resolutions and it's usually a very good indication of how much they cost. The increased resolution creates more detailed data and it allows for smaller quantities to be studied and it tends to be more expensive when that happens. So for example, the digital balances that you will use in chemistry have a resolution of 0.01 grams. That means they have a number in the hundredths place for the mass. But if you take AP chemistry, I have what's called analytical balances, and they have a resolution in the 10,000th place. I actually have one that goes into the um, 100,000th. So really, really high resolution. Those balances that I use in AP Chemistry cost about $1,200. The ones that are used in regular chemistry are about $250, just to give you an idea of how it is. And resolution tells us about sig figs, or significant figures, and we'll get to that later. So when we're talking about accuracy and precision, accuracy is a measurement, a measure of how close a measurement is to the true value of whatever you're measuring, the accepted value. Precision is more a measure of how close a series of measurements are to each other. And to compare them, to evaluate accuracy, what we do is we compare it to the accepted value, and we do something called percent error. And percent error is where you take whatever you measure, whatever you observe that data point to be, you subtract the accepted value, and notice it's got absolute value signs, because I don't care if it's negative or positive. All that tells you is whether or not your value is too small or too large. Um, but it's a the difference between your value and the accepted value, so subtracting, as a function of what the accepted value is. So divided by the accepted value multiplied by 100 to give a percent. And again, percent error, I don't care if it's negative or positive. To evaluate precision, what you do is you compare the values of two or more repeated measurements. So you make that same measurement several times to get an idea of how precise your data is. And what you do is you calculate something called deviation, and that's just your value, and you subtract the average value. In other words, it tells you how far off your value is from the average of all the values. And again, it's an absolute value because we don't care if it's positive or negative. All we're worried about is the magnitude, okay? When it comes to precision and accuracy, a lot of times people talk about these bullseyes. So, for example, this one, if the goal is to hit in the center, it has good accuracy and good precision because all four places are close to each other. Over here, it has good precision because the four arrows or whatever are close to each other, but it's not good accuracy. And then this one, it's kind of all over the place, doesn't have good precision, doesn't have good accuracy. This one, on average, it would hit in the middle. So good average accuracy not great precision. Okay, When it comes to making measurements and when you are observing data or observing something happening and you want to make a measurement on it, it always has some degree of uncertainty and that's hard to recognize. How uncertain the measurement is depends on the resolution of the device you're using and how well you can read it or use that device to make that measurement. Some of them are a little harder than others. The last number in any measurement you make is estimated. The other numbers are what's called certain numbers. For example, if I got on my bathroom scale and it says I weigh 130 pounds, then I get on one that's digital perhaps and it says 133.6 pounds. Which one has the greater resolution? That one. It's got more numbers associated with the, the measurement. And 
which numbers are certain in each measurement? Well, this one, I would say the 1 and the 3 are certain. That 0 is an estimate. It might be 131. It might be 129. Got rounded up. It's hard to know. Uh, so the uncertain number is always the last one. In the second measurement with the digital scale, the first three numbers, the 1, the 3, and the 3, are all certain numbers. And this last number, that 6, is the uncertain number. So anytime you make a measurement, all the digits except the last are called certain numbers. The last digit is estimated. Even if it's on a machine, a digital machine, the machine is still estimating for you. And it can vary, and that's called an uncertain number. When you make a measurement, you should record all the certain numbers plus the first uncertain number. And that's kind of tricky because different measuring devices have different resolutions. So to make this work, what a resolution tells you is it tells you where you're going to put the uncertain number, what decimal place you have to have a number in. It's an estimate. It doesn't have to be right, wrong, or indifferent, but it has to be there. Okay. And the easiest way to figure out the resolution is identify whatever the smallest increment is on the device and divide it by 2. And that's where you put your uncertain number. Okay, that's where you put your last number. It's wherever the smallest increment is divided by 2. Okay, so let's practice with some of the devices you're going to use. One of the things you're going to use right away is a ruler. And now we're going to use a metric ruler. That means it has to be measured in centimeters, milli millimeters, or meters, not inches. But we're going to pretend that this is a metric ruler. We're going to identify on this metric ruler how long that object is. So we want to measure all the known digits and round for the first uncertain digit. Okay, now to figure that out, what we need is the resolution. We need to know what that uncertain, where we're going to put that uncertain number. So if you look on this device, this would be one centimeter and two centimeters. That means each line is a tenth of a centimeter. So to find the resolution, you take that number, 0.1, and you divide by 2. And if you do it on a calculator, it'll say 0.05. That means I need to put a number in the hundredths place when I'm making these measurements. Now, if I'm looking at this particular item, this um, object, it's tricky. I, I think it might be like right on 3.4. So maybe I think it's 3.4 but I have to put a number in the hundreds place, 3.40. That's if I think it's right on the line. Okay, I've got to have a number in that hundreds place. I'm putting a zero there. Okay, and that's okay. Then maybe you read it a little differently. Maybe you think it's a little bit short of that. Maybe you think it's 3.39, really, really close to 3.4. Really doesn't matter what your answer is as long as you have a number in the hundreds position. Maybe you think it's a little bigger than again number in the hundredths position okay and it's totally all about your interpretation of that measurement the resolution determines that you must have a number in the hundredths place but your observation how you observe that data that's up to you okay graduated cylinders you're going to use a lot of you may not have used these in a while but what they do is they measure volume of liquids and if I look at this one, if that's 30, it's measured in milliliters. And if that's 40 milliliters, what that tells me is that the smallest increment, each line, is 1 milliliter. So if I have to read this one, the 30 and the 6 milliliter marks, so 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, are certain. It's definitely at least 36 milliliters, not as much as 37. So the last digit in the tenths position is considered to be uncertain. The smallest increment is one milliliter. Divide that by two, 0.5. I don't know why my pen does that sometimes. 0.5. That means I have to have a number in the tenths position for everything I read. So maybe I think it's 36.5. Maybe I think it's 36.7. I have lots of options. But in each one of my options, my resolution is indicated by going, putting a number in the tenths position. Okay. 
Uh, sig figs, significant figures, are numbers that are recorded in a measurement. They're all the certain numbers plus the first uncertain number. We'll have an entire lesson on these guys in a minute. But the more sig figs you have, the more accurate your measurement becomes. If you use the measurement, if you use the device correctly and um, use the right resolution. When you make a measurement, the easiest way to determine how many sig figs is to identify what the resolution of the device is. And we talked about that. You take the smallest measurement, smallest increment, divide it in half, and put a number in that place, in that decimal place, even if it is a zero. Okay, so these are some graduated cylinders. Now I'm going to first of all identify the smallest increment. Well, if that's 8 milliliters and this is 9 milliliters, each one of those lines is 0.1 milliliters. So the smallest increment is 0.1 milliliters. The resolution, therefore, is 0.05 milliliters and then if I have to estimate this when you read a graduated cylinder with volume it's got this little valley okay it's called a meniscus you always read from the bottom of the meniscus so maybe I think that's 8.6 I don't know 8 milliliters that's just me estimating it I'm not really entirely sure I don't think it's 8.7 I'm reading from the bottom of the meniscus. It's an estimate as long as I have a number in the hundreds place. Now this graduated cylinder was a little different. Again, milliliters, milliliters. If that's 190 and that's 210, this is 200, 210, two, oh no, sorry, 195, 200, 205. Nope, not that either. I have to figure out what those increments are. Maybe they're two. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Yep, that's what they are. So each increment is 2 milliliters. And therefore, to find the resolution, I divide that by 2, 1 milliliter. So if I had to read the volume of this one, and again, it's hard to see. I'm looking for the bottom of the meniscus. I'm going to say that's 201 milliliters. And so I have to have something in the first decimal place, the unit decimal place. That was a hard one. All right, the other device you're going to be using is thermometers. Now I'm sure you're all used to using thermometers. We are going to measure in degrees Celsius and this is the degrees Celsius. We're not doing the Fahrenheit. Okay, so the smallest increment on this thermometer is from 10 to 15. That's 5 degrees. So the resolution is going to be 2.5 degrees. Now that's going to be hard to read. So if I look at this, I might think, you know what, it's right on 15. I'm going to call it 15.0. If you called it 15, I could see where that, you might be able to make an argument for that. It's really hard to read that to the tenths position. If I look at this one, on the other hand, negative 20 to negative 10 tells me each one of these is 1 degree, which means the resolution is 0.5, which means I need a number in the tenths position. So if I'm looking at that... I don't know, it looks like it's about negative 15.5. But again, it's not so important about getting the correct answer is making sure that you have a number in the correct decimal place. Okay, burettes are the last thing you're going to um, use, and they are probably the hardest thing, but they're also the most accurate. Um, the way they are set up is the maximum volume of the burette is written at the bottom of the cylinder and zero milliliters at the top, so it's kind of upside down. The way you correctly read a burette is you read the initial volume of air at the top. You still read from the bottom of the meniscus, but you read how much air there is. Then when you're done making dispensing the liquid, you measure the final volume of air at the top. And again, reading from the bottom of the meniscus, and that is the amount of liquid dispensed. They tend to be more accurate. Um, particularly compared to graduated cylinders once you get you good at using them because in a graduated cylinder when you pour the liquid out some of it stays inside and so that volume that you think you dispensed doesn't dispense whereas in a burette it comes straight out of the device and so the amount you think you have is a lot closer to what you really do have so if i'm looking at this one and as zeros up here and whatever numbers down there i'm going to read how much air there is going down. To me, the smallest increment here is 0.1 milliliters. That means the resolution is 0.05 milliliters. 
and the volume of air is 19. I think that's right on the money, 19.70 milliliters. So I'm reading how much air there is going down. This one, the smallest increment, 34. It's again, also 0.1. A lot of them are going to be like that. Resolution is 0.05. And again, I'm reading from the bottom of the meniscus, the air going down. So I'm going to call that 34.6. So me like it's right on the line, 34.60 milliliters. So when it comes to reading any device, find the smallest increment, divide by 2, and then make sure you have a number in that decimal place, whatever it is. If you think it's right on the line, make it a 0. If you think it's halfway in between, make it a 5. Whatever you think. Okay, it's in, totally an interpretation. Um, but this number, the position where you put it, is defined by the device you use.